Hello everyone, welcome to a foreign farming in the Philippines. So as you can see, that's an incubator, a chick, uh, chicken egg incubator. Watch out, Twinkie. My uh, friend and neighbor, uh, Edison, is here. And uh, we're trying to resurrect this uh, incubator. This is a pretty fancy one. This is the, the top cover here. It has a candling light. Uh, it's auto turning. All this stuff here is fairly automatic. And Edison is, uh, you know, it's my brain doesn't work anymore. So he's putting this together. Uh, he has the instruction manual. And uh, Edison, uh, he has the piggery next door. Uh, uh, well, not next door, across the road from us. It's just right over there. And uh, we've been talking all things pigs here for the last 10 or 15 minutes. But uh, he also raises game fowl. And uh, he needs to incubate some eggs. And the old blue incubator I had, one of the uh, rollers on it, uh, the gear stripped out. Uh, and so that one bank uh, did not roll the eggs anymore. So uh, this one was this one is brand new, still sitting in the box. It just needs to be assembled. So we're gonna do our best to uh, get this going. I forget the capacity on this. I think it's two hundred. I guess I could count these trays here. One, two, three. And these hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So uh, the cats are over there hunting. So 8 times 14, uh, what is that, 112? So uh, this will hold a lot of eggs. And Edison and I have enough. How many, how many uh, game fowl hens do you have? Uh, before, after, before the iPhone, I had like 20, 20 hens. But right now I, I have 6. 6? I sold the other one. After the typhoon. Yeah, we were talking uh, our experiences before and after the typhoon, raising pigs, raising chickens, all that stuff. You know, the typhoon, people that aren't from around here and didn't experience the typhoon just don't know what it was like. Um, Edison, I, you even had one sow that was like stabbed in her side yes. from part of the barn. Uh, the C4 lens. <laughs> yeah, the, the ceiling purlins collapsed on her, and I don't know. It, it was just, and some of the pigs got sunburnt because there was no roof. I remember, it was just, you know, there was, we were talking, you know, uh, Edison had a contract actually to sell the pigs, but there was no signal, there was no way to uh, contact the buyer, there was, you know, it was just insane here, right after the typhoon. And it was bad for months after. Uh, Edison even went to Tagbalaran to try to get signal. I mean, that people don't even realize you couldn't even, you know, we had to drive all the way to Tubagon just to get signal so we could do a live stream. Um, and, and even that wasn't available for a while. It was intermittent and slow, and it was just, you know. Um, and then, are, so, are you going to get out of the piggery business, or are you going to stay in? I'm just going to stay, but I, I, I'm just going to raise three sows. Just three sows? Uh, for now. And I'm not going to grow some fattiness anymore. <laughs> and, and none fattening, only so sell the piglets? The, a piglet. I'll just sell piglets. Yeah. After I uh, Edison has really good stock because I don't know if you guys remember 
my other neighbor, neighbor uh, Ricky Taipan, who had some really expensive, really nice, genetically superior pigs, and uh, he got out of it because he couldn't he couldn't make any money. Um, and Edison and his family ended up with most of his pigs, but still, you know, it's even when you have really good stock, it's hard. And the price of fatteners right now, I had thought it was around the 190, 200 per kilo range, but it's, he's telling me now, the latest update is it's 150. And, uh, you know, I had done the numbers three years ago, and to pay for our labor and feed, we needed between 105 and 110 uh, to break even. Well, feed has gone up, I don't know, well, how much is a sack of feed now? And it's grower. Growers, about one eight. One eight. One nine. Yeah. yeah, and it was like one two, three years ago. Oh uh, yes, before. Yeah, so that's a thirty percent increase in feed, uh, and <laughs> the price of pigs is you know it's it's a, it, it's a world market commodity, and in the Philippines, some of the, one of the dynamics we've been talking about is that you know it's great. Uh, when everybody has gotten out of it and the price is high, but then everybody gets back into it. So it's a, yes. it's a one or two or three year cycle, and it's like being on a roller coaster. It's great for a while, and then it goes to crap. It's just there's no stability in it. And right now, uh, at 150 pesos per kilo, uh, I don't know if you're feeding 100% sack feed. You're at best just breaking even. And so that doesn't cover your gas, your electricity, your labor. Uh, you need that. You need to be at around 200 and then you can make some money. But uh, the question is, is, can you survive until the price goes back up? So Edison has brought uh, reinforcements. He's got another guy with him. Helping him get all this together. We're still trying. We're still in the trying to figure it out stage. Even with instructions, they're a challenge to put together. At least they've always been a challenge for me. So this one here is basically complete. So it's 56 uh, eggs per tray, and uh, so these rock back and forth. You can get a better perspective if from this side. Uh, they tilt uh, one way, and this motor is controlled by the uh, the main panel, and it's on a timer. And you can adjust that usually, but four hours is like the norm, three to four hours. You set them some for every six hours. And this little motor will come on for the amount of time that it takes to rotate them all back the other way. And that keeps the embryos from sticking to the, the membrane inside the uh, shell. Okay, so we've got it uh, assembled. I'm going to take this part here back off and plugged in. And we just plugged it in, so the temperature is, is still climbing. This is what it looks like inside. And there's another, so down below this is another tray. Now we've got to figure out uh, how to program everything. That's always the fun part. So the day counter is probably automatic set. Um, I think this is the countdown for the turning. So in one hour and 58 minutes it will turn. This is the humidity and this is the temperature. So, set, and 
it's showing humidity. This is settings, yeah? Yeah. Press increase or decrease. I might actually have to read things. But anyway, it works. So um, we can program it at our leisure. That's the candler there. And it's a pretty powerful candler. Uh, that's a nice touch, having that built in to the incubator itself. Let's see, let's just let it leave it run for a little while and see yes. where it stabilizes. Already it, could, it could already be set. Um, it's in here. And of course, this is Celsius. It's not Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. 30, is that 38? And you know what? It's been so long, I forget. Is it 30? Yeah, factory setting. setting is 38. So it, it gives you uh, the factory settings egg turning time every two hours, uh, temperature 38. Egg tray and very turning on uh, 15 seconds. Um, the alarms go off at one one degree Celsius over or under. Humidity alarm 45 percent. These factory settings seem uh, pretty good to me. Yeah. So I would say just leave this for. I don't know. Well, I want to see it turn. Yeah. I wonder if we can adjust that to turn now, if there's a test. Go through this, Edison, and see if there's a, a, uh, a way to test the turners. All right, so i um, got an hour or so to wait here. I uh, advised Edison because uh, he wants me to incubate eggs for him. Uh, I'm not sure if I have enough uh, battery capacity to run this overnight. Now, it's 80 watts, but that is intermittent. So maybe 20 watts continuous. I should have enough to run that. But I told him, well, we're not going to put any eggs in this until uh, I'm sure that uh, I have enough battery capacity to run this. And so I told him to come back tomorrow about this time. I'm going to leave this plugged in all night. And uh, we'll go from there. Get this out of the way. And uh, I'll let you guys know, know as well. Yeah, you can see the, the, the when that little heating element light bulb comes on. Uh, that's when the, the uh, heating element is active. So, and the fans are probably 5 or 10 watts continuous, and that generates heat as well. Um, so the heating element, which is probably 60 watts or so, doesn't come on often. So we'll see. Uh, I'll let you guys know. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.